You may have been watching my YouTube videos about growing microgreens and microgreens business, but I've never really shown much of my farm. I'm sure you're curious about my grow space, so I'm gonna give you a full walkthrough along with commentary explaining all the different parts of my farm and what's in here. For the best microgreens content, be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. That way you get notified when I post a new video every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Before we jump into the farm tour, I just want to mention that I would not even have a farm if it wasn't for Nate Dodson at microgreensfarmer.com. I want to give him a huge shout out because it was really his content and his resources which gave me the tools I needed to start my microgreens business in the first place. I would have never started growing microgreens if it wasn't for his course that I purchased in the very beginning that helped guide me through starting my business. It's a great course, I highly recommend it, and if you wanna use the same course that I used when I first got started, I'm gonna put a link right below in the description so you can support Nate and use the resources that I used when I first got started. By the end of this video, you will have seen my whole farm inside and out, and you're gonna have a better understanding of the space that I'm working with. So let's dive right in. Welcome to my urban farm. So this is kind of like the customer area. Right when they walk in, we're gonna be right here. Um, I got a little couch to hang out on. Uh, these are the coolers that I use to deliver all the products that hang out over here. This is the service table, so I can service my customers. I'm usually on the other side of the table as they walk in. Got my little standing desk over here. And uh, this is what I use for payment processing. I use Square. So if people want to use a card, they can use a card and you can also take cash and ring it up right on there on the iPad. I've got a desk over here for my employees and a little coat rack to hang up our stuff. A sign that I use usually during farmers markets and things like that. I got my vacuum over there, the Wi-Fi and everything. Um, got a bunch of jade plants on the floor. Those are my favorite plants. Uh, sorry, microgreens are not my favorite, jade plants are. And they're inside right now because we got a cold snap last night, so I don't want them to freeze. So, uh, yeah, as we walk through, this is kind of just a little table. I have some books and whatnot that people can buy. This is my desk over here. This is where I do a lot of work, get a lot of work done. And then at this point, we're kind of in the employee area. So the customer area, I consider the least sanitary the employee area is a bit more sanitary, and then as we move into the farm area, that I consider sanitary. So over here, you know, we have my desk, we have a fridge that we share, uh, I have my couch here, and then obviously this is the other side of the service table. So this is a standing desk. Like I mentioned before, you can use the iPad to ring people up, and this is all just storage, random stuff in there. And then as we walk into the farm area, everything is supposed to be kept sanitary. I use these special markers. So it's simply just different colored electrical tape. Below the red is unsanitary if I need to get in here, if my hands aren't washed or something like that. Um, and then above the green is sanitary. So this is the fridge I use. This is all I need to service my customers. It's a full size fridge, so there's no freezer two shelves, I just load it up with product, I use the door as well, um, and it gets the job done. So, and this is part of the reason, you guys are gonna be learning more about this later on, but this is one of the reasons why every time I reach $1,000 in my delivery route, I split the route into two because I can't really fit much more than $1,000 worth of product in here. And in the future, I'm actually gonna get another fridge that's more of a display fridge with a clear front, um, and that'll be good for like a grab and go option, and also if I need extra room for fridge space. These are the fans I use. Uh, I don't use any fans on the shelves. That may or may not be better. I'm gonna do some experimenting with that later on, but these big fans keep the air moving through the whole facility. Uh, as you've heard in the mold videos, that's very useful. Uh, so these tend to get the job done. I got stools for my employees if they wanna sit down while they work and sort through sunflower shells. These are my harvesting tables, stainless steel. I highly recommend. I love these tables so much, uh, more than I thought I would. So then I got the shelves over here. This is where we keep gloves, the scales, um, and obviously all the plastic. So 
you know, I have the boxes, I have the small containers, we have the bags under here, and then this is what the orders get packed up in. These are like the, uh, the takeout bags. They're called t-shirt bags. I got my sticker station over here. So um, as we're packing orders, they come down here, we sticker them up and then put them in the fridge after that. You know, paper towels, handy. And also I forgot to mention the board that's on top of the fridge. This is kind of how I know what we need to harvest on each day. So as you can see, I have four harvest days, which also correlate to four delivery days. And the different colors represent different varieties of microgreens. So that's a great way to just see a snapshot of what we have for the week, as well as informing us what we need to pull off of the shelves on each harvest day. Got the garbage hanging out. Um, underneath this counter is really just a bunch of personal stuff. You know, I have my food processor, I have a dehydrator, a blender, and I really just use that for my own, for my own use. It's really not for my customers. I don't do any prepped food in here. I have a bunch of my own sprouting seeds. Uh, that came from True Leaf. So, got some buckets of seeds under here. Just more space for harvesting. And then obviously all the grow racks down the whole room. So, you can see the different varieties that I have. The pea up top. Radish up here. I put all the grass in the middle. Grass is more prone to mold. So I keep them at the same level as the fan so they get most of the air movement. Uh, all the broccoli down here, and then the sunflower is always on the bottom. I always keep the pea up top and the sunflower on the bottom. The sunflowers shed their hulls, so you want those falling on the floor rather than into other trays of microgreens. And then the peas are just, I find, the easiest out of all the varieties, so I keep them up top. You don't have to really see what's going on with those as, well, as much. So yeah, I got a little drying rack when I wash stuff. They can dry on there. Uh, this is my triple sink. Got my magnetic board for my knives. And then this is the hand sink. So you typically want two separate sinks, one for hand washing, one for washing equipment. And then again, some more paper towels. Um, I do a lot of storage of supplies, like packaging, gloves, t-shirt bags, paper towels. I store a lot of that up on top of my shelves as just a way to better utilize my space. I think that's a great, great idea. Um, you don't really want to waste any space in your microgreens farm because as you grow, you're going to run out of space very quickly. These are my wheelbarrows. So after the trays are used up and they're spent, um, I'll take them out of the tray, put them in the wheelbarrows, and then these actually get dumped outside. So I'll show you that right now. And uh, this urban farm, this building, is actually on an organic farm. So surrounding this whole building is a property where we do organic farming. I'm not as involved with the outdoor stuff as I am with just running my business in here. Um, but it's really cool that you know, it's surrounded by a farm. Yeah, you open this up. I got these bins down here. So we just dump it right into there, and those get taken away. I actually have teamed up with a local guy who does composting and, uh, and worm farming. So he takes it away and turns his back into compost. So and you can see out in the distance, a bunch of farm stuff going on. That's a bunch of garlic. And I used to just dump all my stuff from one wheelbarrow into another wheelbarrow and then dump it in this area over here. But we've since cleaned that up and it looks much nicer. And now we can use it for production for veggies. Got my brooms over here, those are important. Uh, I have super racks, that's what I call these. It's essentially just a rack with a bunch of shelves on it, more than these racks, and they're on wheels. Um, the spacing is tighter and there's no lights on these, so this allows you to move trays around the farm very quickly and easily for improved efficiency. And I talked about that in my efficiency video. This is where I store all my seeds. Uh, I always keep them stocked up. One of the last things you want is to run out of seeds or supplies. So I always keep a ton of seeds around. Ideally, you would want them in a cool environment with low moisture. Um, that's uh, probably dark as well. 
but I've had no problem storing my seeds just right out here in the main grow room. I got some lights stored up for expansion. Just some random stuff over here. I have a tent for the farmer's market. Uh, this is just some supplies for my other business where I pack up seeds and ship those out so people can grow their own sprouts. This is the other side of the grow room. A uh, whole bunch of sunflower seeds over here. These only come around uh, every once in a while. I get my sunflower seeds right from Italy. So when they're available, I buy a bunch so I don't run out. Because I don't want to use seeds from another company because these have been definitely the best performers. As you can see on top of the racks, just a bunch more supplies, um, more plastic and whatnot. This is, uh, this is an experiment. So this is borage over here and nasturtiums over here. These are going to get transplanted outside very soon. And I want to try and do some edible flowers. So I think that would be a lot of fun. A nice new value added product. Then I have some arugula and some mustard that are actually, I bought as microgreen seeds, but I just planted them. I'm trying them out. I want to grow them out to full veg just for myself, not really for customers. So yeah, this is the other side of the racks. So I have essentially 12 racks in operation right now and growing every week. And then this is just a bunch of supplies for a flood and drain system that I'm working on. Um, I've been procrastinating a bit on this, but I think we'll probably get this going in the next month. So this will essentially do automatic watering of the trays so I don't have to do it anymore. And theoretically, it should do like perfect watering as well. So it reduces human error. Excited for this. Also, um, you can see up there, I have uh, a bunch of outlets that I had mounted. There's outlets over here on the wall as well. And this is something I felt was important. You know, as I grow, I'm going to need more electricity. And just the outlets in this building weren't enough. So I had electricians put in a few more breakers. And they actually put in a timer that's linked to the box. So I don't have like wall timers that I was using in the beginning. It's actually like, a, like an electrical box with a timer in it. And that comes in and controls all these outlets that are used exclusively for the lights. This is my hose, so I use this to water. Uh, we ran some plumbing and some water lines when I first moved in here. And at the very beginning of all my water lines is um, a very nice water filtration system. So all the water that I use uh, for washing equipment and for watering plants and also for my drinking water, it goes through a really nice filter. Um, so it comes up, and then I have this line to water the plants with. And then I have another line, a hose, that goes down the length of this building that I can then water my outdoor plants with um, when those go outside. So yeah, that's the main grow room. And then back here is the germination room. So this is where I keep my soil right back here, ready to go. I got everything germinating over here. I got some seeds soaking over here. So these are actually going to get um, drained out right after I shoot this video actually. These will get drained out. So I got some wheatgrass soaking, some sunflower and some pea. This is an automatic uh, seed soaking system that I've built and I'll, I'll definitely make a video on that in the future for you guys. This has been very useful for me instead of coming in at 8 o'clock every night to soak seeds. Uh, this goes off automatically in the middle of the night and then when I get into the farm in the morning I can just drain the water out and they're ready to go. So um, I'm excited to make a video about this. It'll be fun. You can see all the trays germinating. I use weights on top of my trays. These are about 14 pound paving stones is what they're called. I got them from Lowe's, pretty simple. And uh, I stack the trays and they germinate. So these will go actually under the lights today. These are all radish and then it looks like some, um, some salad mix from True Leaf. Um, so you can see these are not quite ready to go out yet. These are all my seeds that I soak. So I have pea, sunflower, wheatgrass, and barley. And then I put the soil into here. I'll break it up on the counter, push it into the bin, and then it's ready to use. And then this is my seed cabinet. So I store all my seeds in here so that way they're ready to go. Weigh them out on the table over here. And then I make my trays right on this table. 
And then back here we have another board that's, that's similar to the board over on the fridge back there that I showed you. But this is more about when we're making trays and when the trays are going out under lights. And the other board is more about harvesting and what's ready for that day. Um, yeah, so this is where the whole process starts. I have a sink back here to wash buckets and I don't know. That's about it. That's my farm. So hope you guys like this and I'll see you next time. Now you've seen what my urban farm looks like, but what if you want a resource to help guide you in starting your business step by step? Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there's a link below in the description to the course that I used when I first got started, and I think it will help you to get started as well. It actually has a lot more information in it now compared to when I first bought it, so lucky you. Nate keeps on adding more information and content into the course, so even though you only pay for it once, you're going to keep on getting more value for years to come. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button below, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and share this video wherever you see fit. If you want to learn what materials are needed to start a simple microgreens farm setup, click the videos below and click the other video if you want to learn what it's actually like to run a profitable microgreens business. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time.